Okay, so today we're going to be investigating resistance. Now, there's two experiments that we're going to be doing. The first one is called Task 1. In the first video, this is what I'll be focusing on. Alright, so, the equipment you're going to need is a power pack, an ammeter with a reader, a voltmeter with a reader, and a resistor. And you'll also need a selection of wires as well. What I'm going to do with you first of all is I'm going to go through the setup for this practical. So, as you can see here, you've got a diagram showing how to set up this investigation. Alright? Now, I'm going to go through with you wire by wire how to set this up because I don't know in electricity, it can be quite complex at times. And this is why I've spread my equipment out as I have. So, the first bit, you've got a cell. So, the symbol at the top is a cell. Alright? You're going to connect that battery to an ammeter. So, in the port, that says DC, which stands for direct current, you're going to place a wire in there and connect it to an ammeter there. That is your first bit. Then if you look on the diagram, the ammeter is connected to a resistor. So you plug a wire into the ammeter, like so, and then you plug your wire into your resistor. Then, ignoring the V bit for now, you're going to plug a wire in the other end of the resistor on the bottom, okay? Not the top. We'll plug it in the top for the second task. For task one, it goes in the bottom like that. And then you connect it back up to your power pack like this. The V is connected in parallel. The V stands for voltmeter, all right? So you're gonna connect a voltmeter in parallel to your resistor. So you plug your voltmeter into your resistor by just inserting it into the ports on the wires like this. Now in your table it says you are going to be changing the potential difference which is the voltage, the dial on here, and seeing how it affects the, um, the current for a resistor and for a bulb. I'm going to go through with you the resistor first of all. So, what you do is you make sure your power pack is on and you switch on your power pack. Now the power packs only go to a voltage of two, a potential difference of two. So, your teacher, your classroom teacher, will have to give you some results for a potential difference of one. So you are starting at two. So you switch your power pack on, make sure your dial is at two. And you are going to read the current on here. Now sometimes it will go off and that just means that the wires have come out slightly. So you may need a partner to hold those wires in while you take the reading. Sometimes you may as well get a minus number like you can see there. Just ignore that minus number. All right, all you're writing in is this value. So for where it says potential difference of two in your table, you are going to write in your value there. Okay, so my value would be 0 point something. Again, the ammeters are quite temperamental, so we'll take the original reading, which was about 0.39. All right, it's stabilised now. Sometimes it does that. Okay, then all you're going to do is you're going to turn up your potential difference to 3, and you're going to write down your reading. And then you turn up your potential difference to 4, and you write down your reading. And you turn your potential difference up to 5, write down your reading, and you do the same for 6. Okay? So that is for collecting your results for your resistor. Your second bit is your filament lamp. So you turn your power pack off, and what you're going to do is you're going to replace your resistor, this here, for a bulb. Alright? So you'll be given a bulb that looks like this with two wires on. All you've got to do is replace the wire now that's in the ammeter here and place your wire for the bulb in there and then replace this wire from the power pack now and place your bulb in there like that. All right, so now you won't need the voltmeter for the second part of this experiment. So you can put the voltmeter away. All you're going to do now, again, you turn your potential difference 
back to 2, which is the first value. Again, your science teacher will have to give you a reading for the first one. And then you're going to switch your power pack on. And all you're going to do is write down your reading for the current in the first bit there, which is 2. Okay, potential difference of 2. Once you've done that, you turn your potential difference up on your power pack and write down the new reading. You turn it up again and write down the new reading and you continue doing this until you get to a potential difference of 6. Now you will notice that as when the potential difference was very, very low, the bulb wasn't very bright. It might not have been on at all. But as you start to turn the potential difference up on the power pack, the bulb gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And that's because the power pack is supplying more energy to the electrons that are moving around the circuit. Once you've collected your results, switch your power pack off and you turn your attention to your graph. Now the graph reads, Plot a scatter diagram of your results. Plot the independent variable, which in brackets is the potential difference on the horizontal axis, and the dependent variable, which is your current, on the vertical axis. Use the same axes for both the resistor and the filament lamp and draw two lines or curves of best fit. I will go through with you on the board now an example of how to plot this. So. If you look at the board, I've got my potential difference, which is my voltage on my x-axis, and I've written the units there in volts, and I've got my current on my y-axis, and my units there in amps. So, you plot your potential difference, so a potential difference of 1, let's for imagine for a moment, is about there, okay? And let's say, for example, a potential difference of 1 got a current of 0.2 amps. So you will go across to 1 and up to 0.2 and place a mark like that. And you keep on doing that until you've plotted all your points, until you get to a potential difference of 6. Then you draw a line of best fit. Your line of best fit must be a line starting at zero that goes through the majority of these points. I've done mine rough, but you'll need to do yours with a ruler. The task says you need to draw two lines on there. So that's the one for the resistor. You'll need to do another, um, another line now for your filament lamp. So you plot your results for your filament lamp. And let's say they go up for example, like this. There may be higher, it depends on the results that you get. So again, starting at zero, and you draw your line of best fit through the majority of the points, a straight line with a ruler. That is your graph, and you will then label it as the one line is your resistor, and your other line is your filament lamp. Make sure you've got units on your axes and your lines of best fit go through the majority of the points. And that is the practical write-up for task one. So we are looking at then task two on investigating resistance. Now, I like to think of task two as two separate experiments because the setup is very different. You need to set up circuit Y and circuit Z. I'm going to go over with you at first circuit Y. So circuit Y, you've got a battery pack like this, connected to an ammeter in series, which means it's next to it, which is connected to a bulb, connected to another bulb, connected to back to the power pack. Now, the wires look really, really complicated, so I'm just going to spend a minute or two now going over with you how to set this up properly and how I did this. All I did was I looked at the diagram and saw where the wires needed to go. So that is all you need to do this practical. First of all then, it says in the practical book that you're going to have a power pack connected to an ammeter. So that wire there, where my finger is, is connected to my ammeter in series. That means it's next to it. Then I'm connecting a wire from my ammeter, one, to my bulb. So I've got my red wire there where my thumb and finger are, and that is connected to this bulb which is connected to, by this black wire and this red wire here, another bulb. You'll notice, because these bulbs don't have any ports on them, they're just a wooden block, 
we've got two wires and all you do is you put the wires into each other like they are here, like that. Then I've got my bulb connected back up to my um, back up to my battery pack here. You can see that black wire right in the bottom there. What I'm wiggling now. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated. What I've had to do is set up two bulbs in parallel. Two voltmeters in parallel, sorry, not bulbs, two voltmeters in parallel. The one is connected over the one bulb. So I've got my voltmeter here, and to connect it in parallel, what I've done is I've put a one wire into the red wire on my ammeter one, and then I've put this black wire here on top of that red wire that was connecting my two bulbs together. I've then got a second voltmeter, voltmeter two, which I've labelled there and I've done the same. I've connected that voltmeter to my power pack and I've connected it in the centre with my other bulb as well. And then finally I've got a voltmeter which is measuring the potential difference across my power pack. Those are just these two red wires. One in the power pack there and the other one in the power pack there. Quite a complicated setup, but again, you must spread out your work. If you don't spread it out, you won't see where all the wires are going. What I've done to help me as well is I've labelled each of my pieces of apparatus. So my ammeter, my voltmeter, my other voltmeter, and my third voltmeter. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be changing the potential difference, which is the value on your dial on your power pack and you're going to be writing down the readings on ammeter 1, voltmeter 1, voltmeter 2 and voltmeter 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is switch on my power pack and at the moment you can see it's on a potential difference of 2. On your table you've got to have a potential difference of 1. Your teacher will have to give you some results for this as the power packs only go to a potential difference of 2. So you switch on your power pack You may not get any readings first of all, just check all the connections on your wires if you get this. So I'm just going to put down my piece of paper and I'm going to check all my connections and make sure all my wires are plugged in correctly. Again, you may not get any readings for the first one. As you can see, having just adjusted the wires a little bit and pressing them in, I've got now readings on all four of my readers. So that's all you need to do. You may need a partner to help you do this. What you do is you write down all your readings in your table. So your table is listed ammeter 1, voltmeter 1, voltmeter 2 and voltmeter 3. And that is why I've labelled all of my pieces of equipment. Then all you need to do is you turn up the potential difference on your power pack. I'm going to turn it up to a potential difference of 3 because that's the next one on my table. Again, if you need to, just hold in the connections on all the wires until you get some readings on your voltmeters and your ammeters and you write in all your readings. You repeat this for a voltage of up to 6 because that is the final vo um, reading on your table. You will notice that volt the readings on voltmeter 1 and voltmeter 2 add up to the reading on voltmeter 3. So at the moment on voltmeter 1 I've got an approximate reading of 2.9. On voltmeter 2 I've got an approximate reading of 2.5 and, and my reading on voltmeter 3 is 5.9. The voltages across those two vo um, bulbs add up to give me the total voltage in my cell, all right, which is the total voltage coming out of this power pack. You will notice this reading is nearly six, which is the reading on my power pack there. So that is for circuit Y on your table. What I've done is I've set up circuit Z. Now as you can see, circuit Z is far more complicated than circuit Y. So I'm not going to get any demonstration from this now. When you do this in class, your teacher will demonstrate this for you. But the principle is exactly the same. You are changing the potential difference on the power pack. So starting from two and going all the way up to six. 
and you are writing down in your table the readings on each of the readers. So we've got ammeter 4, ammeter 2, ammeter 3, voltmeter 6, voltmeter 5 and voltmeter 4 and you simply write your values in the table as the teacher does the experiment in your lesson.